Yeah, so um, I, I've started on my channel to do a, a few more breakdowns of some of his more esoteric works because I think that they're just so important. He wrote, uh, um, you know, he's a prolific writer of philosophy. He's known in different fields for different things. He's known in the field of history and philosophy for things like the paradox of tolerance, for discussing what the, na the true nature of democracy is. People think that democracy is about how, for example, we install particular rulers using a voting system and we're trying to find the best rulers and that's what democracy is all about. And Popper said, no, that's not really what democracy is about. Democracy is kind of like the scientific version of the way in which we deal with rulers. In other words, it's a system for removing bad ones. It's a system for once you've got these rulers in place, which is um, what the voting does, how can we get rid of them most efficiently without violence? Well, that's the measure of a good democratic system is removing bad rulers. In the same way that the true purpose of science is error correction. It's removing the bad ideas, the bad theories, so they can be replaced with something a little better. We can try something else out that's better. So that's one part of Popper's philosophy. The other part, as you say, is this idea of testability, falsifiability, the demarcation line between science and everything else. This was long a mystery to people. Uh, philosophers were engaged in, well, we know science is different to other stuff, um, but how can we be sure that the proclamations of science are absolutely true? After all, in mathematics, you've got Pythagoras over there and Euclid saying, it's absolutely true that uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, that one plus one equals two, all of those trope ideas. Mathematics has got necessary truth. We can be sure about the claims of mathematics. But here in science, you know, you observe the sunrise today and yesterday and the day before that and all throughout your life. But can you be sure that the sun is going to rise tomorrow in the same way that you can be sure that one plus one equals two? Um, what's the difference between these claims? Why can't you, why can you be sure in one area and sure in another, not sure in another? And, and people tried all sorts of different approaches to answering this question. You know, they said, oh, mathematics is deductive. It's a deductive system. Science is an inductive system. You have this process of induction where you generalize and uh, maybe that's the difference that you, you gather evidence in science and you, you can never be sure, but you can be highly confident. And Popper came along and went, ah, that's all wrong. You're looking at it completely the wrong way. It's not about trying to be sure. It's not about trying to have certain truth or anything like that. In fact, in mathematics, you've not even got certain truth. All domains of knowledge are conjectures of, uh, of people. People can make mistakes. People can make mistakes in mathematics all the time. Uh, they make errors. Uh, people can make mistakes when it comes to science as well. So what we're doing in science is we are coming up with theories and then testing them against reality using experiments. And if you can do an experiment to test your theory, then the thing might qualify as science, might. But it's certainly the way in which if, if your theory can't be tested, certain areas of philosophy, you might not want to test a particular idea, um, then it might not be science. So the criterion of demarcation, in other words, the, the separation of science from everything else is the possibility in principle of doing some experimental test. It doesn't mean you have to think of what the test is right now, but in principle, you can have some tests. But David Deutsch has explained that, in fact, Popper's criterion um, of the separation between science and everything else, this idea of testability. Although it's true, it is perhaps a little narrow. What you need, in fact, is a good explanation of the physical world. And then you qualify as science. After all, like I said earlier, you've got these claims about, you know, eat, a, eat, eat one pound of grass, that'll cure your cold. That's a testable claim, but it's not scientific. Why is it not scientific? Because it doesn't have a good explanation. The person wearing a sandwich board in the middle of Times Square saying, the end is nigh, prepare for, you know, the, the apocalypse next Tuesday, they've got a testable claim as well, but it's not scientific, even though it's testable. Why? And they're, they're, it's going to be tested and they're going to be shown to be wrong. Um, but it doesn't make their claim scientific. You need to have a good, hard to vary explanation. So I urge everyone to watch... Um, a new way to explain explanation, David Deutsch's TED talk on precisely what we do as a civilization in order to improve our life, not merely in science, but across every single area. So Popper um, was a philosopher of first rate. I think he was the greatest philosopher of the 20th century. Um, he stood against the intellectual zeitgeist of his time and even of today. Other people, for various reasons, had far more influence, uh, people like Wittgenstein, because they seemed to be more comfortable in uh, the academic arena. They had a lot more disciples, for want of another word. Their ideas spread throughout academia, 
And unfortunately, in the case of Wittgenstein, we can't blame him for this, but they led to certain species of kind of nihilism and, and, and rel uh, relativism, these ideas that, well, philosophy is kind of meaningless, it's pointless anyway. You know, all you're doing is you're talking and having these constant uh, you know, um, debates about meaningless problems. The real problems only exist in science and mathematics on this view. And Popper said, no, that's, that's wrong. Okay? You, uh, philosophy is absolutely important because it explains the conditions under which science can thrive, the limits of mathematics. How we can understand how to make better political systems, all of it, what morality amounts to, all of this kind of stuff, um, is is dealt with in, in in Popper's various works. But Popper, of course, wrote decades ago to an audience of philosophers. I, I find his work when you compare it to because I had to read this stuff at university. You had to read Leibniz and Spinoza and Descartes, all these you know old guys who you know the translations of their work are, are dense and difficult. So when you get to Popper, you go, "Wow, this is so refreshing. It's just so clear." But if you're not familiar with philosophy and you pick up a book by Popper, it's understandable. People go, "Oh, this is impenetrable, difficult to read stuff. You know, it's hard to understand, big words and all this kind of thing." But compared to every other philosopher, he is. <laughs> head and shoulders apart, uh, above, all of them. So the, I say the best way into Popper is via David Deutsch. You read The Fabric of Reality, you read The Beginning of Infinity. The best way into those books is to go to the Naval podcast and to, to, to listen to him. Um, and then, then you pick up the books and you go into that. And then if you're still hungry, and I would be astonished if anyone is not hungry at the end of reading both The Fabric of Reality and The Beginning of Infinity, um, hmm. Then go to Popper. Then go to the works of Popper and deep dive on those because, um, yeah, it, there's just so much. There's so much to mine there. There's just so many jewels that are. And this is why on my podcast I'm devoting more time to that because I think that, you know, we 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 need to have an understanding of that. This is this is philosophy for the 21st century. It wasn't appreciated in the 20th century near enough. Now, David De Deutsch has written his books in this millennium. And so we need to, to, to take these ideas on and move past the misconceptions of last century. They did well. They did well to take us out of the authoritarian modes of thinking that religion and political ideologies uh, saddled us with and the caused a slowing down of a certain amount of progress. Um, so what we need now is to ratchet up that accelerating progress. And the way in which to do that is with ideas about accelerating progress and optimism and the key cosmic significance of people in the universe. And, and it's, in particular, it's David Deutsch who explains that to us, building on the work of Karl Popper.